Welcome back everybody to a tactical fly fisher video. We took a little bit of a drive this morning. Uh, we're gonna call this video plan B because originally I was hoping to uh, walk into a kind of a high country lake this morning and hopefully catch ice out for some nice cutthroats, but I got a call from, or a message from my friend last night that he tried to get in there yesterday. And uh, the road was so muddy from all the recent rain that he couldn't get there. So instead, we decided to come to a reservoir that's out in the plains, um, see what we can get out of it. Uh, hopefully it'll be good. It's close by to a really famous river. So if the reservoir is a little bit tough, uh, we brought our river stuff along and we can always uh, head down there for a little bit. Um, but uh, we'll toss the raft out since the boat ramp here is a little sketchy at times and uh, we couldn't necessarily get my, my motorboat in. Um, do a little lock styling from the raft and hopefully we'll find some uh, obliging rainbow trout along the way. So come along, let's go see if we can catch some fish. And if not, hopefully at least Kramer and I will have a few good laughs. To begin, uh, I have rigged up a bit of a straight line midge rig or coronamid rig. So I have a midge tip line with a three foot uh, clear intermediate tip on it. I have about six feet of 4X tip it to my top dropper, which is a doll uh, Then I have about four feet, three and a half, four feet to my next dropper, which is a tungsten uh, coronamid, a little ice cream cone. And then uh, we're also gonna rig a little bit of a hybrid system into this to see if they maybe want to leach more than they do the midges, so I have an olive uh, little leech with an uh, orange hothead on it. Uh, given the conditions, we finally have a little bit of ripple, a little bit of wind, um, but it's been very calm overall since we've gotten here and, and put the raft in. So um, the midge rig is going to allow me to fish very slow and vertical, get some vertical jigging action, um, but mainly the, the key when it's flat calm and high sun like this is to be able to fish slow and not have to rip things through the water. If we get a, a big wave or a wind later, then you can start pulling some, some uh, buggers or other lures quickly and probably get reaction bites. But until then, uh, while, it's, um, while it's calm like this, we're gonna fish slow. So this is one of those ways to do it. We'll give it a go and uh, see how it turns out. When you're fishing this mid rig, like this, it doesn't really pay to bomb long casts because, uh, especially if you're drifting lock style like this, a lot of times the boat could swing or it could turn before you can actually finish your cast. And one of the best parts of the retrieve is right at the end as you start to lift up on the hang. So I tend to keep my casts fairly short, somewhere between the 30 to 40 foot range, whereas you know, I would cast much longer a lot of the time if I was fishing a sinking line. Uh, and then that gives it enough time to get down with those weighted flies and sit for a little bit and move when you give it the occasional twitch. But not so long that you're spending a lot of time with it doing nothing, essentially, uh, before the hang. And I am ticking bottom there. Looks like we're in nine feet of water here. I've got a little deeper sonar with it connected to an app on my phone. Um, so while we're in these shallows, we'll speed up the retrieve, kind of keep it a little more constant. Most of the time when I'm fishing that mid rig, I like to just barely keep tension and then have long pauses in between where I maybe even don't have tension and then just watch the line 
for strike detection, but that of course lets those flies fall. So since I have that uh, leech on here, we'll give it a little bit of movement, keep it off the shallows or off the bottom in these shallows here. We started in about 13 feet of water. Um, so we'll give it a couple casts here in the shallows and then if that doesn't work, I'll move back out a little deeper where I can fish this rig a little slower. And then as I get to the end of the retrieve, I just, there, I just had a whack. <laughs> I missed it on the hang, so we'll, uh, we'll focus on that hang on the next cast here, and I'll get you an idea of how that's done. Also, when I'm fishing a midge tip and a midge rig like this, uh, normally if I was retrieving flies quicker, I would have the rod right down in the water and often uh, cocked off to the side just a few degrees to provide some uh, tippet protection when they really slam it and you're stripping hard. Uh, but often it's actually easier to see the take with a midge rig by watching what's called the swing tip. So if you look, I've got my rod tip, you know, 10 inches or to a foot max off of the, the surface of the water. And I'm just watching the point where that line connects with the surface of the water. And if that juts out or, or zips out a little bit, I know that a fish has taken it. And you'll often see that happen before you actually feel it. And then that gives that swing tip also gives you a little bit of cushion for tip of protection. Okay, so now I'm to the part of the hang. I've still got a little bit of fly line out the tip of the rod. And I'm just lifting that rod tip up slowly and making those nymphs and that leech look like they're ascending and trying to get away from the fish. And it's often right then when a fish that may have been looking at your rig for a while, it realizes, oh, those are getting away, they're, they're ascending to the surface, they're emerging, you know, whatever, and that can often spur them into taking. Couple of sweet jumps. Whoa! Looks like it took the middle dropper. That ice cream cone midge or corona midge. <laughs> One thing about big still water rainbows in uh, 51 degree water, I guess it's not as warm as I thought, but and you know, relatively good temperatures for them to be hanging out metabolically. They don't like to give up.
despite not having any current to work with. Oh boy, what did this fish do? Flopped my point fly above it, so I gotta be careful with the net here. Somehow swam through the leader with all that jumping. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, back in front of the boat fish, please. There we go. <laughs> now that's a nice fish. There's the first fish of the day. Really well built rainbow. It took an ice cream cone coronamid. One of the many reasons I love still water fishing. One of the joys of uh, jumping rainbows, jumping straight through your leader. I now have a little bit of fun to unpick from that first fish. Uh, got another one on here. I switched. I've gotten three more takes on the hang uh, on the last rig, but it seemed like I was getting short strikes. I wasn't sure if they were nipping at the leech or what was going on, but normally they don't really take the midge rig that way. They're usually pretty determined about it. So I went to three straight midges, just different variations on chronomids, and uh, this one is taking that middle dropper again. A little bit smaller than the first fish, but still jumpy. Yeah, so this fish took that ice cream cone coronamid still in the middle of the rig. And another nice chunky rainbow. Not quite as long as the first, but really well built and a fun fish. Kramer just hooked up here. He's got a bit of a washing line on. Nice. Whoops. <laughs> I will need a net. Oh yeah, net. About that. In a minute. Please don't go get tangled up in that. Oh yeah, right through my line. Perfect. Perfect fish. Oh, man. man. <laughs> they like to dig. Yeah, that's another nice fish. Yep. Okay, so I've got on a uh, Rio long midge tip, so the six foot long midge tip. And then I've got three flies after that. Uh, the first fly after the line is an unweighted chronomid. Uh, the second fly is a beaded chronomid, a red and silver uh, chromie that he took. And that's the one that he ate. And then at the end I have a fab uh, just to keep that as a washing line basically. So it uh, seems that the fish are pretty high up in the column right now, because as soon as we switch to fishing higher in the column, we started hooking up a lot more, so. Yeah, which is kind of interesting because we did not see really any rises this morning yeah. for any real suggestion this that dude, the fish would be up high, but this so dude far is they are. Such a football, I can't get a hand around him. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice fish. That's a real nice fish. All right, get him going. Okay. Kramer's got another one here. 
The washing line rig seems to be the rig of choice at the moment. It's had a few other grabs as well. Which fly did it take that same middle dropper again, Kramer? I'm trying to see. <laughs> I think so. So maybe you can explain a little bit while you're landing the fish. Yep, same. kind of how you're point. fishing it. Uh, so basically, I'm just putting it out there, getting tight so that I'm tight to the fab, and then just giving it a couple jerks to get that fab to drop under the surface of the water. And then I'm giving it 10, 20 seconds for that longer, longer midge tip to sink, and then just real slowly crawling it back to me, keeping the tension tight, and just maybe moving those flies a tiny, tiny bit with each strip. Yeah, but your line's been sitting out there pretty darn still. Yeah. There's usually a little bit of coiling still in it. And so broke. it's definitely letting those sit. You're, you're kind of almost approximating an indicator rig. <laughs> yeah, close. In, in how slow you're going. <laughs> and was the chromie? Is that what you have on there? Yep, the same one. Yep, chromie. So For those uh, red of you who silver. may not know what a, a fab is, it's a foam arsed blob. So it's a blob that happens to have foam on. Oops. Happens to have foam for the butt. Okay, you're good. Happens to have foam on the butt so it's buoyant and it holds up that rig, which is why it's called a washing line rig. It ends up looking like a washing line under the water. All right. Then they have to re-rig it. Yeah. Let's get back at it. Well, Kramer just landed this fish and I shot the whole thing in slow-mo on accident. <laughs> Hadn't changed back <laughs> the camera, but uh, we've drifted into about 10 feet of water and suddenly I broke off a fish, Kramer got this fish and I missed one more. So not only do they seem to maybe be in shallower water, but they're also still suspended. I went to an all unweighted rig with still a buoyant fly on the washing line rig. So they're up cruising, especially now that we got some, some clouds. Oops. <laughs> they are so fat. It's hard to... Uh, they're very fat. Fish. There we go. <laughs> nice fish. Yeah. <laughs> so we were, we, were, uh, we were resetting after the last fish I just caught, and Devin picked up his rod and has a quite large rainbow <laughs> attached to the end of it. I'm sitting here eating a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> My flies were sitting there beside the boat. I was wondering why it was kind of swimming away. <laughs> <laughs> so, fish the hang, folks. Fish the hang. <clears throat> Gotta finish my peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't choke on it. <laughs> uh, well, I took the top dropper. <laughs> Not that that really means anything, but... <laughs> This fish looks like it spawned not too long ago. The old adage that it's whoa, <laughs> better to be lucky than good. All right, Why we have not? definitely seen so far that these fish are in shallower than we started originally, and they are also <laughs> closer to the surface. Might despite... I have the net? Oh. Why do you need a net? <laughs> Thank you. Right after that last fish that took my flies while I wasn't didn't even have my rod in my hand, I uh, made one cast, and before I could even fish it, Kramer already had this on. So, washing line with a fab and coronamids, a midge tip in the shallows. That one took the unweighted one finally. <laughs> Yeah, right up near the top. Now that we have clouds, I think they've come even shallower. 
and they're definitely looking up. Hold on, hold on, please don't do that. Thunderstorm is already dropping lightning over there, so hopefully it doesn't hit too quick and we're able to uh, get some more fishing in before we got a bail. I mean, I'd love it if we didn't have to bail at all, but the way it's been lately, that might not be like it. As is often the case with uh, still water, there's so many variables you can try. It's truly a three-dimensional game, uh, even more so than it is on rivers. And uh, we started out, oh, there's a nice jump. We started out a little bit deeper, you know, in 13 to 15 foot water. And I started out with two tunks and beads and I did get a couple of fish and then, I worked hard for a while and didn't get any more. And then Kramer uh, started fishing. I told him to try and help sort out the puzzle. And he went with that washing line rig and pretty much instantly had a take on his first cast. And he was casting in towards the bank into the little bit shallower water at that point. Apparently I thought it must have been a fluke because I didn't take it as much of a sign. <laughs> but and so we kept fishing out deeper. He still ended up getting more takes than I did on that deep rig. I started lightening up and lightening up. And finally, I just went to a washing line rig without any weight at all. I've got a mop booby actually out here on the point. And that's what this fish just took. Although every other fish has taken chronomids so far. Um, but we're in less than 10 feet of water now. You know, my flies, with it being unweighted flies and a booby on the end plus a midge tip, you know, my flies can't be getting much more than maximum four to five feet deep, I don't think. I could be wrong, but they're definitely high in the column, uh, which I guess was surprising to both of us because I was expecting to see fish rise. When we first came in, when it was dead calm, and we just weren't seeing them rise. So I thought, oh, they must be down a little bit eating pupa, but they're not. They're definitely not. Come on, fish. Well, if I learned anything from last week, I need to just start complaining more. <laughs> just, if you're not catching fish, just complain loudly about it, uh, and eventually you'll annoy the fish gods to the point that they give you a fish. Yeah, let's not, let's not tell our kids that. <laughs> <laughs> What the heck, fish? Way to make me look like a dum dum. I guess I better go back to fishing. <laughs> Dear Mom, Devin is a super meanie. <laughs> I'm being bullied. <laughs> As is usually the case. Yeah. The minute I sat down, turned the camera off. Kramer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> this poor guy. Got a fish. This poor guy had a rough year, too. And uh, 
these fish are all post spawn, but some of them not long since done spawning. This particular lake, as far as I know, they don't actually stock any fish. All these fish are, are wild, so that part's cool. But it does mean that you get a few fish this time of year that look a little worse for wear after their amorous activities. Or just a floater. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. <laughs> On and off. Are you gonna let me complete an entire cast before you hook a fish this time? No. Whoa, okay, I'll just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> uh, net, come here. Uh. Took the top dropper. All right, so nope. That's okay. Hello, hey there, fish. I think you were going that way. Yeah, 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 you were. I just watched you swirl on my... <laughs> oh, never, never, maybe not. I must have just been my leader sinking. Yes! <laughs> that was the most gradual but steady hang take. <laughs> oh man, that was awesome. Whoa! That's another fat, hot fish. I don't know if this is the fish that just rose, but certainly in the area. Either way, just the most excruciatingly slow retrieves ever. It takes minutes almost to get each retrieve in. But right as I went to uh, hang this, just before the hang, I just watched my swing tip. And it just gradually tightened up. It was a super subtle take, but a really nice fish. Another really nice thick rainbow. See you later, buddy. Just crawling more chromies. Yeah. Oh. Yes, the net again, that. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, folks, there's a recurring theme here. <laughs> it's a good theme. Yes, it's a good problem to have. Normally we have two, two nets in the boat, but in this tiny little raft, I decided to go with one today. I think it might have been a bad choice because there's a lot oh, of passing wow. back and forth of nets. Oh, what a disaster he made. Yeah, he wrapped you up pretty good, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I might just have to redo the whole thing. Oh, wow. It's a nice fish. Yeah, it's not that fish. But he paid for it, or made you pay for it with, <laughs> yeah. with that rig. 
cuestión que... You got an even bigger mess than I do. Ooh. Yes, I think so. Uh, there's no saving that. You just cut it off and start over. Thanks, fish. I mean, thanks Thank for you. taking, but maybe. Okay, that was, like, that was like a mile and a half, maybe. Okay, we might be <laughs> uh, we might be taking a break here, cause that's the second bolt that's. That's the second bolt that's hit awfully close and then getting closer, so I guess we'll see. The rainstorm has moved in along with some lightning that's getting a little bit close. So, time to go back to the car. Have a little break and hopefully it'll blow through. <laughs> oh, what a hang take. <laughs> that was awesome. You passed me that net. Oh, thank you. Nice fish. Really nice fat rainbow. Took that uh, top dropper, Chromie. We uh, just got back after having to take a break from the thunderstorm. We had a couple big bolts hit within about a mile, mile and a half, two miles over there. And so we decided better safe than sorry for a little bit. So we went and uh, hung out in the car, let it pass. We're back out and back into the fish. There you go. That was a hard grab. Saw that out of my peripheral vision pretty, pretty obviously. Great grab from that fish. You seem to be good at that today. 
One fish, one tangle. <laughs> another fish, another tangle. <laughs> Didn't miss that one. That was a rather positive take. Okay. Well, if you're gonna take it on the reel, I'll put you onto the reel. Uh, come on, net. Another nice chronomid eater. I don't know if it's the same fish or a different one, but I had a little nippy grab that I missed just before that. I threw it right back out in the same place and that one was a very positive grab. The uh, washing line continues to be the way to go. And as we've drifted around to different depths so far, it seems like we have our best success right around nine to 11 feet. I don't know if that's just because there's that many more fish there or if that's because that's where our rig is fishing the best but when we've tried out you know 15 feet we've still caught a fish or two but not as many and then when we've gotten in shallow there's still some fish in shallow but they're kind of just singles that are cruising around instead of pods or just more, uh, better congregations so the trick so far seems to be stay where the the depth is more dark green because uh, right when we get in about eight feet of water we can start to see lighter colored tan um, and that's confirmed. I have a deeper phone running for the sonar on my, or a deeper app running on my phone for the sonar. And so I've noticed that whenever we get onto that, that lighter colored bottom, we're in about seven, eight feet of water and we've still caught a few fish, but certainly less than we have out deeper. So one of those things that it pays to keep, uh, you know, track of while you're out fishing still water, pay attention to the water around you, the color changes, the um, specific depth you happen to be when you do catch fish, because sometimes you can find patterns where they're certainly in uh, more, in depth ranges more reliably than others. Um, all right, let's go get another.
So I just got another nice average size fish here. But the wind has kicked up quite a bit uh, in the last 30 minutes. And uh, the fishing has kind of dramatically slowed since that happened. I think our rigs just you know, aren't performing the same once the chop came up. Um, so uh, even though we could probably tweak it, um, just out of curiosity, I'm going to switch to a pulling rig. So a couple of larger bugger style flies on a Type 3 and, and um, strip fast, um, do some different retrieves under this chop. I'll see if I get a reaction bite that way. And Kramer still has the midge rig on or the Karamid rig, so hopefully we can compare if one uh, is better than the other now that the conditions have changed a bit. <laughs> uh, first cast whack right before the hang. we go. Oh, come on. On and off. Mm. Well, so far I've gotten more takes if I've counted down despite it not being that deep. With fast retrieves, I'm not getting any deeper, so. If I go down to about 20, I've had three grabs then when I had not very many without that. There's another little nip. most of the fight, but uh, it's been a while since the wind kicked up since we've been catching fish. I had quite a few takes right off the bat on the pulling rig, but didn't hook any of them, and then it just went dead. So 
Kramer's got a Type 3 on. What'd you get it on, Kramer? It's just a humongous? The purple humongous. The purple humongous, yes. Purple tailed humongous. I think we might finish out this drift and then uh, see if we want to continue because the last row back was quite arduous. The waves don't look that big, but the wind has been pretty serious. Ah, oh, nice fish. See you later. Whoa, hey there. Whoa. All right then. Yeah, I slowed down the retrieve quite a bit, like you had it. And, uh, what can I say? It's okay. I need the net back. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Not mine. <laughs> Thank you. Nice fish. Gosh, I love how silvery the lower half of some of these fish are. And then the others that have like been on the shallows the whole time are a lot more colored up. Oof, that's a nice fish. Well, just as I mentioned that we hadn't been getting them in the wind, Kramer got that one on a slower retrieve. I slowed down the retrieve on that fish. Kind of just let it drop along the way. A really nice hard grab. So maybe I'd just been ripping a little too fast. The water is still pretty cold, especially now that the sun's gone. It's, it's back down under 50 degrees. So who knows? Maybe they just don't want to chase as much. But uh, yeah, good little end of this drift. We'll see if there's any more to come. Come on. Come on. Oh, dang it. Fish chased it all the way to the surface. I should have not shortcut the hang. That's what I get. That's what I get. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Well, I'm clearly getting fish following it because they're coming to the hang and I think he spent himself on those jumps. <laughs> it didn't have much left. <laughs> Another chunky, humongous eater. Not bad.
nice rainbow to end the day here. Thanks for watching this uh, tactical fly fisher video, everybody. It's a great day of still water fishing. It's the perfect place to come when uh, the rivers are blown out at present. Um, we had some good coronamid fishing for most of the day, and then when it got really windy for the last couple of hours, we turned to the pulling rigs and got a few fish doing that. That last fish just took a little black leech with a chartreuse head. A lot of us refer to that as a blank saver. But uh, anyway, we hope you enjoyed it. And come on over to tacticalflyfisher.com where you can get some gear for your next still water or river trip. And uh, whatever tying gear you need to tie some flies for it too. We appreciate the support and uh, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one because we have some more fun coming up for you. Would you like to explain our situation? <laughs> well, the fact that we're sitting on the side of the road with the rain falling, waiting for a tow truck, should be pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, we think the alternator crapped out on our right, like, I don't know, five miles from the boat ramp. So, uh, yeah, we stopped and got some dinner and then started driving and then every last electrical system in the car started to fail. Luckily, I was able to get it off the side of the road before everything <laughs> died. And, miracle of miracles, we have a couple bars of service. So, yeah, now we're waiting. We're waiting a long time for the tow truck to come. <laughs>